My sponsor, Rock Bottom, is currently running a special deal. Head on over to rockbottomcoins.com and use code ZERK at checkout for a 30% off your order. The whole thing wobbing. What's going on guys? It's Zerks coming at you today with another YouTube video and today I'm going to be going over the top 10 most overrated players in Madden 20 and of course this is probably going to anger quite a few people so apologies if one of your favorite players is on this list and of course don't be butthurt about it but with that being said of course had to make this list I've done the underrated players and I gotta say take a look at the overrated players it was actually a lot harder to find 10 players I think were super overrated. There are definitely quite a few that are like obviously overrated, but it was actually kind of hard to try and find like 10 players. With that being said though, I hope you guys do enjoy the videos and of course if you do, smack that like button and of course hit that sub button down below because we're about to be getting a ton of Madden 20 news, Madden 20 Ultimate Team news. It's about to be flying off the shelf so you guys do not want to miss anything. Make sure to turn that notification bell on. With that being said, let's go ahead and get right into it. So, first off is going to be a defensive tackle, and it's going to be Michael Pierce. Now, Michael Pierce comes in as a 92 overall defensive tackle, which actually ranks at some of the higher DTs. So, you'd expect him to have some pretty good stats, right? Well, I took a look at his stats. This man had a whopping zero sacks, zero forced fumbles, zero fumble recoveries, and a total of 32 combined tackles. To me, I'm not sure that's a 92 overall. I really don't. I can understand if he is pretty good at getting to the blocks or getting through the blocks, you know, getting some pressure maybe, that he could deserve a 92 overall. It seems as though he may be pretty solid in the run game. But for those statistics, I don't see how it's deserving of a 92 overall over a lot of other guys. Okay, so obviously you guys knew this one was coming. Delaney Walker, 92 overall. Not sure why he's a 92. Uh, I did actually talk to one of the ratings creators or ratings adjusters and basically they said that with Delaney Walker yes he was injured but they do not adjust overalls based off injury now I don't think I'd have a problem with that except for the fact this man is still rated above George Kittle who just broke the NFL record for most receiving yards in a season and I completely understand that Delaney Walker is still a good tight end but here's the thing they said they don't adjust it based off injuries, and so his 92 overall rating is going to be based off of his 2017 season. So obviously in 2018, he was injured. He had four catches for 52 yards, and that's it. In 2017, this is what they rated him in 92 off of apparently for Madden 20, was 74 catches, 800 yards, and three touchdowns. They got him ranked as the third best tight end over George Kittle, who broke the NFL record for most receiving yards in a single season. So to me, it just doesn't make sense how Delaney Walker is a 92. I, I honestly don't think I'd be as mad if maybe Kittle was a 94 and Delaney Walker was the fourth highest tight end. I'd be like, okay, still overrated a bit, but okay, but he's not. So that's why Delaney Walker is definitely going to be on this list. And of course, next up is going to be Greg Olson, who comes in at an 89 overall. Again, I know Greg was injured, but even when he played, he still wasn't the same Greg Olson. He had 27 catches, 291 yards, and four touchdowns. Now, if you want to say, well, maybe they were based off his 2017 season before they started not making adjustments based off injuries, basically. He had 17 catches, 191 yards, and one touchdown. So yeah, 2017, 2018, obviously not good. Uh, his 2014 through 2016 years, all over 1,000 receiving yards, so very solid seasons. But again, it's supposed to be based off of 2018, if not 2018, 2017. Neither of those years should give this man an 89 overall, in my opinion. So you may notice we have a lot of tight ends on this list, but next up is going to be Tyler Eifert, and honestly, I just feel bad for Tyler Eifert. This man has been injured quite a bit, but still, I do not feel as though he is an 88 overall at all. Uh, if you guys take a look at his stats, 2015, so literally four years ago, was his best season. He had 615 yards and 13 TDs. Besides that, you're looking at 2016 with 394 yards, only five touchdowns. 2017 only had four catches, 46 yards, and zero TDs. And this past season, 15 catches, 179 yards, and a touchdown. I still feel like Tyler Eifert has potential, but at this point in his career, I'm not really too sure, and he's definitely not an 88 overall at this point. Okay, so obviously, we had to fulfill purpose on this list. This is probably the one that everyone's talking about. The majority of people are saying is way overrated is Phillip Rivers. 
I am honestly on the train of Philip Rivers is underrated. Uh, yeah, he's an underrated player, but he is most certainly not a 94 overall QB. I don't understand how this man is above people like Drew Brees, uh, Big Ben, Russell Wilson. It doesn't make sense to me. Philip Rivers definitely had a solid season, 4,300 yards, 32 touchdowns, and 12 interceptions. But in no way, shape, or form is he, is he the third best quarterback in the NFL behind the likes of Patrick Mahomes and, of course, Tom Brady, Aaron Rodgers being a 90, and you put Philip Rivers in 94. Yeah, that's uh, interesting. This one pains me to have on the list, but I had to put him on here. Even as a Cowboys fan, Sean Lee does not deserve to be an 84 overall. Now, if you're going to give someone like Darius Leonard an 84 overall, and he led the league in tackles, no reason should Sean Lee be an 84 as well. Of course, Leighton Van Esch kind of took over for Sean Lee now, and, I mean, he's, he's a stud. Sean Lee's not getting his place back. I believe Sean Lee is coming back for this year, and it's probably going to be his final year as a Cowboy. I'd imagine he might retire and then maybe become, like, the linebacker's coach. I, I hope he does anyways. He definitely uh, would, would have some skill there. But Sean Lee... He only had 30 tackles here and .5 sacks. So, yeah, didn't really have the best season. Obviously, he's become very injury-prone. He's always been a kind kind of uh, injury-prone. He's a stud when he's on the field, but at this point in his career, he's definitely tuned down a little bit. Obviously, 2015, he had 128 tackles. 2016, 145. 2017, 101. But at this point in his career, it's basically almost over. Next up is going to be Leonard Williams comes in at 84. Now, I think my problem with Leonard Williams getting 84 overall is with the likes of people like Chandler Jones uh, getting an 83 and then Frank Clark getting 83. I don't understand how Leonard Williams able to get an 84 overall when this man, compared to Frank Clark and also uh, Chandler Jones, who both had 13 sacks, I believe, he has five sacks. That's all Leonard Williams has. Now, you might think, well, he's a good block shooter. Maybe he stops to run. 42 tackles. Yeah. So, to me, having Leonard Williams above the likes of some of the best pass rushers in the league, some of the best defensive ends in the league, I don't think that's right. I don't think Leonard Williams deserves being 84 overall. Maybe he'd be an 84 if Frank Clark and Chandler Jones were maybe 87, 88, but with them being lower, it just it makes him overrated. Now, I should say this. I actually really love Stephon Diggs, but... Again, this is just kind of the case of take a look at how they rated other players around him and take a look at the way they rated him, and I just don't think he deserves to be a 93 overall. You can make a case for Adam Thielen because that man literally broke an NFL record of most consecutive games from the start of the season with 100 receiving yards. Stephon Diggs did not do so. Now, I will say he had a very solid season, 1,021 yards, 9 touchdowns, and 102 receiving yards. But when you have the likes of Mike Evans, who outperformed him in terms of yards, and I believe touchdowns as well, uh, at a 91, that doesn't make sense to me. So I think Stephon Diggs is overrated again, just because of the fact that players that had better statistical seasons, players that have been ranked higher by basically pro football focus and other things, uh, they're lower overall. So to that, it kind of makes Stephon Diggs overrated. I don't really think I have anything to say about this one besides the fact that Le'Veon Bell took a year off football, came back, and he's the third highest rated running back. I don't understand how you can do that, honestly. I mean, obviously, number one, you have Todd Gurley. Number two, Ezekiel Elliott. I think number three should probably be Saquon Barkley, and I would say Saquon probably could be a 93 uh, behind, of course, Ezekiel Elliott. Usually, rookies, they don't tend to get the highest overall. Like, Zeke led the league in rushing as a rookie, and I don't even think he was a... I think he was like a 90 or something after his rookie season, so it's pretty apparent that Saquon Barkley definitely has skill, but I feel as though he should be above Le'Veon Bell, and Le'Veon Bell should be maybe a 90, 89. Taking that year off football is definitely going to impact him, I believe. It's going to be kind of interesting to see exactly how he plays with the Jets offense. And the final player in my top 10 list is going to be another tight end. It's going to be Jordan Reed. And again, they might say, well, injuries. Well, if it's supposed to be based off of 2017, because that's again when they didn't really take ratings down from uh, injuries. Yeah. It's still not good. In 2015, obviously, was his best season. 952 yards and 11 touchdowns and 87 catches. That's a good season. But 2016, 686 and 6 touchdowns. Again, not too bad. But then he really took it down. So 2017, he had 211 yards, 2 touchdowns. And finally, 2018, 54 receptions, 558 yards and 2 touchdowns. So... Again, another tight end. I feel as though it's too overrated. I feel as though they have too many high overall tight ends. Like, if you take a look at the rest of the list of, say, cornerbacks or wide receivers or halfbacks or QBs, whatever, 
the fact they have players like a couple different tight ends that have not been good in the past couple of years at, at overalls like 88 or 87 and you have elite tier nfl players or players that have put up really good statistics like frank clark sitting at an 83 overall it just by nature makes these guys overrated at an 88 because it just makes no sense to have them up there when they haven't performed in multiple years so with that being said, that is my list of the top 10 most overrated players in Madden 20. I'm sure it definitely made a couple people mad, but that's okay. Comment down below who else you guys think is overrated in Madden 20 as well. I already did a video going over who I think are the most underrated players. And even did one for the most underrated player from every single NFL team. So make sure you guys check that video out. Hopefully we get some more Madden 20 Ultimate Team news sometime later this week. Hope you guys did enjoy the video. And if you did, smack the like button, subscribe and comment. I'll see you guys next time.